Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's your girl V from Drinking Tea with V, and you are here locked in at the best place to be. A on a Sunday, on a fun day, any day, have it your way, honey. And today is all about coming back to where we started off with Money Matters Me, and that is giving back. So I have an update for you instead of the live that I promised you initially, but trust me, it's gonna be good. We're gonna have an update on the situation in St. Vincent, one of the uh, shelters, actually the biggest one, North Union, and I would like to take you along on this ride. But before we do that, um, we're gonna get into a little bit more of, you know, the drinking tea with V stuff, and then we're gonna get into that, okay? So what is drinking tea with V? Well, basically your Sunday slumber party with a business slash entrepreneurial flair, and your place to be for entertainment where we talk about business, life, and love. And um, it's all about a holistic approach towards uh, the journey of success. So uh, that is Drinking Tea with V. And dr there's no Drinking Tea with V without actually drinking tea. So honey boo boo, I got me my cup today and guess what? Guess what, I promise you that this would probably be one of the teas that I would be drinking over and over and over, especially in this season where you don't want to be caught slipping. So my flavor of the day today is a ginger, which is super good for me lately besides the immune boosting properties because we know what situation we're currently dealing with. But, um, you know, it's also good for, for digestion. And so I feel like, you know, it would help me with a little bit of, um, this is TMI, I don't think we're, we're family. We are family, so I think I could talk about anything. A little bit of extra bloating. You know, we gotta, we gotta get everything tight and right for the hot girl of summer. So yes, we gotta deal with that bloating situation. So that's why I'm having the flavor of the day, ginger as well. So you know this is multi-purpose. Get you a cup of fresh ginger tea. You see mine here? It's been, it's been steeping, honey, it's been steeping. So, mm, that is for flavor of the day. And now we go into gratitude moment of the week. And uh, with this gratitude moment of the week is all about focusing on the positive things that happen throughout the week. And I feel like when we focus on positive, the more positive we attract. So it's all about positive vibes, positive vibes, okay? So what am I thankful for this week is something very... I would say developmental because I haven't always been in this place but I feel like I have grown so much and that is what I'm grateful for and that is my development in diploma in diplomacy and so dealing with several situations this past week it has shown me my growth in that area and I'm so thankful for it because it is a vital skill to have okay definitely one of those things that i'm like hey girl i see you i see you so yes i'm 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 thankful for my growth and development within the area of diplomacy honey so yes coming to the topic of the week which is the update of st vincent giving back i would now introduce you to the north union crew so have a look um, my name is Kaman Green. I'm the shelter manager at the North Union Secondary School. Um, presently, the shelter is housing 110 shelteries. We have age range from 1 to 83, 83 being the oldest male figure here. Um, we have about 26 children at the shelter. Um, children will be under the age of 15. Um, the oldest of the, ch ch of the children there will be only have about four of them at age 13. No, no 14, no 15. Um, we have different um, characters to deal with at the shelter too. We have in, in terms of Horses on the camp who are willing to help. Horses on the camp who all kind of stuff. Um, with me, 
I have my deputy here. He will introduce himself and he will be the one to take you around. And to my extreme right, we have the person in charge of the cooking. And I think she will see a bit of herself too. And to the left, we have the volunteers who help heavily in terms of getting the kitchen ready on a daily basis. Right? Mr. The Deputy will take you through the rest of the video. Alright, good morning, good evening, good night, whatever time of whatever time this video will be meeting you. I am Johnny Noel, and as Mr. Greenwood of rightly said, I am the assistant shelter manager here. Um, so for the tour, the first stop we're going to make is right by the kitchen where my lovely chef here would introduce you and explain to you what takes place in the kitchen. My name is Colin Nero from the Red Zone. I cook in the kitchen. I do um, a little what is it, volunteer to the kitchen. So nice to meet you guys. Try and help us, please. All right. Good, good, good. Nice to meet you. Look at that. All right. Good promotion. Just a quick sneak peek of what's in the kitchen. Um, of course, these boxes just arrived from the Bonads. Um, thumbs up to them. They would have just donated some vegetables and so for us. Um, we have a deep freeze, or this is a deep freeze that was donated to the shelter as well. As a matter of fact, there are two deep freeze that was donated. This grey one and this white one right here. Most of the cooking utensils that are being used are from the kitchen itself, right? At this time, I will take you around the rest of the compound, meet one or two of the evacuees, and let them say a few words to you. Alright, so from this room, go right to left, all the way to my all the way to my far left. Mm -hmm. Living quarters. We have persons occupying these rooms. Um, and the downstairs to that building as well. We have persons occupying the the rooms for sleeping purposes. I uh, will just take you a little bit closer so that you can get an up close and personal view of what these rooms look like or at least what one of the rooms look like. And of course there is Red Man and the man in the compound as well. He's an evacuee as well from the Red Zone and he is sitting here with us and helping us on the compound. <laughs> So as I've said, this entire block is living quarters and I will just floor it. I just introduce you to one of our one of our evacuee from the red zone. It's okay for us to come to her. Yes. Come in this that camera man. <laughs> Right. This is this is what most of the rooms looks like. The departing off because we have various um, families and individuals living in living in one um one class classroom. So this is Floret, and Floret would just say a few things or share with us briefly her experience thus far. Hi, well. My experience here in the shelter is not so bad. It's a bit more comfortable now that we have equipment like beds to sleep on and stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's quite a number of family in one room. As you can see, we're part of here. So we can get a bit more privacy other than being open. Yeah, so 
That's just basically for now. This is our home for now, so we try to be as comfortable as possible here. Hey, thanks very much, Florette. <laughs> and so we we'll take you now to the back of the building where we have more persons occupying. of buildings that are being used for sleeping purposes are those buildings behind here all of the classrooms all rooms behind here are being used for living purposes and again these buildings are parted off because of various families and various individuals dwelling in them um, with me here as well is, is, is Miss Franklin Desiree Franklin and of course Miss Franklin is one of the um, mm -hmm. parents whose, whose daughter would have been um, diagnosed with the COVID-19 virus and so we would give Miss Franklin a short opportunity to, to, to share her experience how she feel that they would have handled the, the situation as it regards to her daughter here on the camp. Oh, yes. <laughs> and well, when my daughter have the COVID-19, I did expect better treatment from nurses. Since she have it, there were no nurses to go around and ask how the feeling or take the temperature. I have to keep going and asking, and when I keep going and asking, they get angry. It's like they were scorning them. Mm. And my daughter was a somebody to scorn because she didn't know. She, she was a child lying down and crying for pain. She was always active and doing her little thing on, 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 on arm. We we'll call that thing TikTok. So she was a, I will put it as this, she was a really a sick child. No pain, just was a little taste and smell and then she taste came back and she smell came back and she was there over 14 days. And 14 days was the maximum. And when I go and ask the nurse about it, they say, um, they will check, but they didn't never check. So the nurse, some of the nurses were very, very selfish for me, for me, and that is the truth. The the two um, what do you call it? Two persons that was over this camp. They was at help. They tried their best to seek people to um help out with those um, patients who was who did have the COVID until to a point they cannot do nothing more which I did understand I can't give them no wrong in that all I'm blaming was the nurses them and the need so as I said Yes, yeah, she getting along. She don't take her, her, her second swipe. And I pray to God tomorrow, maybe the latest journey. Supposed to be. Tomorrow the latest. I must get a result and know if she's clear or if not. Because I did get to a point I was going to remove her from up there. Because 14 days did pass and nothing didn't happen. Mr. Green said we'll get locked up, but I didn't want to get locked up, so I just leave. so I just leave it. But otherwise, it's okay with the camp. Meaning, they just need a little more strength and a little more donation. And I think that's the reason why they're talking right now. And this 
phone to send for you all so if you all can help them especially for the children sake it will be very appreciated thank you and god bless you all okay there you have it we would have shared with you our own unique situation right here at the north union secondary school shelter um, i must say before we go that here we house mainly persons from the village of point that is over the rabuka dry river however um we also accommodated persons from lower down um from georgetown dixon langley park we have those for some of those persons here with us as well uh we hope that we would have met your requirements and we do look forward to hear from you again i would like to say a huge big thank you for Mr. Kaman Green and Mr. Johnny Knowles for taking us around the shelter and also introducing us to the evacuees and all of those who have been helping behind the scenes. Thank you for giving us a look around. I mean, it's, it's definitely a work in progress and I feel like everybody's situation is being taken um, into consideration and I must say, guys, job well done there. And for for the viewers, I would like to Yes, again, implore you, you've gotten to see a behind the scenes of the shelter, of one of the shelters in St. Vincent, the North Union Shelter. If you feel it up on your heart to also give a donation, go to drinkingteawithv.com and donation, the donation links is there. So via Ideal or PayPal, let's, let's give a helping hand, especially like I've said before, we as a, as People from sister islands in the Caribbean, we've known what a couple of years ago, what Irma, Hurricane Irma did. And maybe some of us might not have an idea of all of the, the things that are going on in St. Vincent where the volcanic eruptions and everything subsequent to that uh, that is taking place. But I hope to give you, I have given you an insight into that. So please feel free to even if it's one euro, two euros, you know, whatever you can, every little bit will help. And I can't wait to further update you on more stuff that is going on. But for this, you're going to have to stay posted. It's an ongoing journey and um, it takes time and energy, but I definitely feel moved to do this. And I hope you are too. I know there's a lot of things going on in the world and uh, especially with Palestine as well, cannot they get that fact but this is one of the things that i feel like my heart is always going to be for for the caribbean in particular so i feel like hey let's as a caribbean people and also those who feel you know that the caribbean is close to home and even if not if you just feel upon it feel it upon your heart to to give and donate and stretch a helping hand for humanity just um go and donate or contact me at contact at drinking tea with v.com and let's see what we can do together to even if it's 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 with products or whatever to get it shipped there let me know contact me and we can uh, talk further okay so for this uh this is the drinking tea with v episode for this week thank you again I will be coming back with a live. I promise you a live. I will be coming back with a live on Instagram. And uh, that will be a bonus episode. So definitely stick around for next week. And I'm not going to tell you the topic yet. Trust me, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It is going to be fantabulous. But this is the episode for this week. Be fab, stay fit, and have a fantabulous week. Deuces. Bye.